Hi. Yeah, it's me again. We're on the beaches. Today we're going to do a video on slide baiting. A lot of people around the world already know how to do it. A lot of people don't. It originates in South Africa and it's very popular around the Indian Ocean area. I started doing it about eight years ago and it's caught some fantastic fish for me. It's not widely used in Europe, but it's becoming more popular. So I'd like to give you an introduction to it and the way I do it and the way a lot of other people do it as well. There will be no actual fish caught in this video. It's just a, a demo on how to slide a bait, that's it. This is a non-returning slide. This is actually a South African one that I imported. And it's got everything you need to get going here to start with. You can just open it. Predictably, they're quite difficult to open because that's the idea. So this is the two components. You got the non-returning slide itself. This is a weighted one. It's got a half ounce in the end of it. It's for windy days to stop the slide from flipping over and uh, tangling in the line. So it keeps it down. And it walks out to sea like this. It slides down the line like that. And it walks out to sea, it goes down like that and it traps itself. And then you give the, the rod a little twitch and it goes whoop, like this. You'll see as it goes out anyway, until it hits the end of the lead, well, until it hits the lead weight, or more or less, it'll be stopped by this ring, about a meter and a half before it hits the lead weight, which is down the end there. You'll see it, I'll explain it all to you over there. So that's the slide itself. I won't be using this one today because I like to hang on to the, the original ones, but I make them myself. And here's one I've made. It's not too dissimilar at all. It's got the same weight on it. I just like to simplify it when I make them. I'm gonna do a video on this for you, if you like, and how to make these. It works in exactly the same f fashion. Got a bead there. The bead's to stop the spring from compressing and opening if the fish puts too much pressure on it, gets stuck on a rock or whatever. If the fish and the terminal tackle gets caught up in a rock or whatever like that, and the main line snaps. The fish can just swim off with this. Just about a meter of line and this, that's it. That's the only thing that'll be obstructing it then until the hook rusts out of its mouth. That's one of the things I like about it. One of the things I don't like about it is it's very time consuming. <laughs> it can be quite exhausting. And so the traces we're going to use today Obviously, a lot of people fish for sharks and raise with um, with slide baits because that's what that's what the whole thing is about: getting a large bait out to sea, 100 meters or as far as you can throw it, 150 meters. If you can't throw that, 75 meters sometimes with a very big bait, it will get the job done. And so the hooks would go like that in this fish and you'd bind it on with some elastic we do a whole thing on it so some of the hooks i like to use are circle hooks this is a 10 out demon circle it's a mustad if you were to use this hook for this fish you just hook it straight through there like that and you'd bind it on sometimes i'd put a wire hair through the middle of it and i'd loop it back up halfway and i'd whip it on like that because sometimes the fish will come along if you don't have a wire hair running through the fish, it will bite you off halfway. If, the, if it's a nice long bait like this. So if I'm not using the wire hair inside it, I'll just use half a mackerel like this. If I'm using the whole mackerel, I'll put a wire through the middle of it and just wrap it around the tail or whatever. So if the shark or whatever comes along bites in half, you won't swim off with half your bait. It'll pull into his mouth. Obviously with a wire, wire leader and J-hooks, that's not a problem because you're taken care of there. If you can see what I mean. That'd be the carry hook there, and that hook would be right there where he'd bite you off, so he'd get hooked there anyway. So that's it. So to start off today, I am going to use J hooks for this demonstration because most people use J hooks, I think. And there's no fish here to get hurt anyway. So we're just going to use this demonstration for demonstration purposes. I'm going to use the macro. So first up, what I like to do is take the fins off it. Stop it spinning. Then you take the gill covers off it as well. Just exposed. 
the gills underneath. That's the grooves and cuts in its head for the bait elastic to hold on to. It's not 100% with slide baits that you need to do this, but I find every little helps. And so I want a hook in the side of the fish here. So I'm just gonna eyeball this. This hook's gonna go up the top here. This is the carry hook, as I call it. And it's the biggest hook of the two, anyway. She put that one there, like that. I just measure it up, like so. I'm gonna put a little cut in here to hold this hook, just like that. And so to secure this one here, I'm going to push this into the bait, but I have this pin that I use. Some people use cocktail sticks or whatever, but I put this into the, the thing just to stop the hook from flattening out. It really stabilizes the hook there. So now you start with your elastic. This is latex elastic. It's much better than normal nylon elastic because when the fish starts to defrost, it tightens around the bait. Which is much better than if it doesn't. It becomes all loose when the other fish start picking at it and other stuff like that. Just work your way up and down the bait. Just around the hooks, that's all you need to do. Once you get started, you can move a bit faster. Then you just finish it up the top there. With a couple of half hitches around the hook. That's what I like to do it. So that's it. I think this bait might be a little bit large for what I'm doing here. These hooks, yeah, they're a little bit small for the bait. This is what I thought, so I just cut the bait down a little bit like that and expose some of the, the gut and that. So that's ready to go, more or less. So then we just tie it onto the slide. And I use nothing more. This is about, just about a meter's worth of a 150 pound 49 strand wire I like to use because it's nice and supple and then I just attach it to the swivel with a figure of eight just around the finger once twice you don't need to do more with wire than that then through the hole at the back there open the knot up close the knot and slide it down trim off that tie because you don't want that to catch on the main line. So that's it there, ready to go. Here in Europe, that will catch pretty much anything. Tope, poor beagle, stingrays, whatever you want, you're good to go. So you are all probably wondering why you got a fishing channel and I haven't been doing any fishing lately. At this time of the year where I live in Western Denmark, all the flatfish are spawning right now. I'm not gonna make videos, I can still catch them, but I'm not gonna make videos and injure fish when I can't even eat them. So I'm just gonna wait until the cod come on in April and the herring and torbit and other stuff like that. So for now it's how to is right, deal with it. So this is what I use when I do this. This is a Fathom 40. And it's loaded up with a 100 pound shock leader. It's got 50 pound main line, 200 meters. And underneath that, it's got 450 meters of eight strand, 50 pound braid. The rod is a 14 foot long Shimano Tagnium. It casts from seven to 10 ounces. It's got two tips you can change on it, depending on what you want to do. And it's quite a thing. It's not like rods we get here in Europe. What we're used to it here in Europe is J-curve rods, very stiff butt section and a softer tip section. This one's gone completely the other way. It's got a really, really, really stiff tip section and a very, very, very soft butt section. So if you're hooked into a big fish for a long time, 
and uh, some of the fish I've caught 40 minutes, 45 minutes, you, your back's going to really feel it if you've got a very stiff butt section. So the soft section at the end really helps. And um, yeah, this is what I use. You can use smaller tackle for smaller fish, but if you want to cast for sharks and halibut and other things like that, I feel you need this. I also bought it for skate as well, to do that as well. So the rod is ridiculously light. It's an import from South Africa. The reels are also an import from the States. And they have magnetic brakes on them, which I had put on it. And I love them dearly. More than my children. <laughs> so one of the important things with slide fishing to remember is that you don't cast the bait out. You cast the lead weight out first. This is an eight ounce lead weight. I make these myself. It's got an extra long tail on it to help it grip in the sand. Because the further the tail is away from the lead weight, the more it pulls the wires into the ground. It's also got a bait clip on it. If you're fishing in rough ground, you could tie a weaker link on there. You could hook it up on there like that and cast it like this. Then when it hits the water, it pops free. And that weak link there will break if the shark gets snagged up or the fish or whatever. This is the ring to arrest the slide, to stop it from sliding all the way to the end of the lead weight. Because if you're fishing for rays or whatever, they don't like getting spiked by the wires. So you have to keep the slide as far from the lead weight as possible. Well, about a meter. Then on top of that, you got more 49 strand, 150 pound wire. This is just in case uh, a shark rubs against the leader too much or whatever. It's got a more resistance to vibration than the, than the mono. And then you've got your 100 pound leader there. This is a special knot I use to tie the two together so it doesn't uh, catch the slide on the way over. So it will travel all the way to the, to the ring down the bottom. So you cast this out first and then you attach the slide. This is what it looks like when it reaches the sea floor, not with the, wet, the wires folded back. But just like this, the wires will be in the ground and the bait will be up above it, away from the lead weight. So that's what the ring up the top there is for. This is an eight ounce grip lead with uh, spring steel wires, very, very tough. But if you're sliding the big bait, they even they will pop loose. So what I like to do is put a rubber band around it. Just like so. And then this will, will stop the, the wires springing loose when you're the sliding the bait out. Of course, the more turns you put on it, the more it grips. I've only put a few on, so it pops loose when I want it to come back. There's something else I'd like to point out. It is possible to slide on braid, but you need to be on a height of a cliff or something like that. If you're slide, sliding on a flat beach like this, you need to use mono because the, the slide will um, grip the mono and will walk its way out. If you just use braid, it will just slide right back in. So it won't be a non-returning slide. If you're going to attempt this, it is best that you use mono for it. So now I'm gonna put out my cast and we see how far we can get it. With 50 pound line, I haven't practiced in a while. This is the first time in a long time. I can get 100 meters easily with this setup with 50 pound line easily. And if I mess with the magnets and all, I, could, I reckon I could get 120 or so, maybe 130 meters out of it. Even with that giant reel there. So first cast. Surprisingly enough, the best cast for doing this is the South African cast. You can't really pendulum cast with these rods with very stiff tips, so South African cast is your man. And also sometimes you're using as much as 10 ounces on the end of the thing, but this is just eight ounces today. So I'm gonna whack out the first one, then we're gonna slide the bait out and you can see what that's like. Yeah. So now I've got it cast out. I let it sit for a few minutes. This is usually where it, I prepare the bait or whatever. Just to let it roll around and find a hollow somewhere. When you're slide fishing, it's really important to know which direction the tide is running. On a beach, it will run laterally along the beach. 
So right now on this beach, the tide is going out, so it's running this way. So I've, ca I've cast slightly in this direction. So the tide will help push the slide all the way to the end of the line and keep it there. This is very important. You might think you're at the end of the slide if you cast it this way in the beginning, but give it half an hour and the slide will work its way back up and the fish will pick you up and it'll burn you off. So always know which way the tide is running and cast with the tide. So first of all, I just take the bait and tuck it into my belt like that. I take the rod and I walk to one side because I want the, the bait to slide at a slight angle. Because like I said, the tide is running that way. So then I let the drag off. And I let the rod down towards myself like this. I'm looking for the fishing line. There we go. Now take the slide. I start to put it on. So I like to put it on this side here, hold it with my finger. They come this way and up and around. It goes all the way around. Till it reaches the end and now it's free, you can see it's free. Now you clip it back on again. Now you let it down on the ground. Now you wind down until the rod is flat and the line is tight and then you lift it up and the bait will slide out towards the sea. In the beginning you just rattle the rod like this just to get it past the breakers. And when it passes the breakers then you start to sweep the rod backwards and forwards. I like to do it 120 times to get it to the end of the, um, to, to the, end of the slide. So I'm just going to flatten the rod out now. further from the rod the slide gets, the more exaggerated your swings have got to be. So that's 30 times now. Six times. Halfway there. <laughs> you can always change as well. You get tired in one position. If the lead weight keeps coming back towards you, you need to either put on more weight or one, a, a lead with bigger wires or uh, um, put more elastic on it so that the wires don't spring loose. If it's coming back towards you, you defeated the process. The slide's sitting still and the lead weight's coming towards you, so you're not getting anywhere. So it will end up around about 20, 30 meters in front of you. So if you, can, if you have to keep constantly tightening the line, your lead weight's moving. And you don't want that. There has to be quite a bit of tension in the line for the slide to work. And this is the bit most people don't like about slide fishing. <laughs> That should do the job nicely. So over to the tripod, sand spike, whatever you got.
Put your ratchet on. Loosen your drag. And then you sit back and wait for all hell to break loose. <laughs> so, that's it for me now. I am Billy. This is Billy Sliding Baits. Thanks for watching. And remember, brothers and sisters, I'll see you on the beach. Bye.